So, Madam Chairman, you have a quorum? You have a quorum. And um, first item on the agenda is minutes from the June 3rd meeting, which were distributed. Is there a motion on the minutes? Move the approval. Second. And moved and seconded that we approve the minutes of distributors. Are there any corrections, additions? Could you read the roll, please? Certainly. Uh, Alderwoman Creason. Mm. Aye. Alderman Boyd? Aye. Uh, Chair Stouter? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Powers? Aye. Commissioner Peebles? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Jay? Aye. Commissioner Visentainer? Aye. The motion passes with all present voting yes. Okay. <coughs> the action items, uh, John, item number three, I think you have some comments for it. Two, two quick things I'd like to do. One before that is that we have many people here tonight either observing or uh, related to items. But we also have an honored guest, is that Tracy Boaz, who's uh, uh, sitting against the wall there, is in the process of being uh, named to the Planning Commission, so she's getting to see, uh, see you folks in action. She'd be a citizen member, uh, work closely with her on vacant land. Uh, she works for the Department of Conservation and uh, she's the immediate past president of the state chapter of the American Planning Association. So, uh, provided that FBI check comes through, uh, you know, I think it's <laughs> get her. That's number one. Number two is, uh, is item number three. Uh, you may have noticed in the paper uh, a concerted effort of the, of the city to make doing business in the city uh, easier and more modern. One of those techniques is people do things, they live, work, and play all in the same place. So this is a pending zoning change to help make that be facilitated better as home occupancy. And the condition of use process for that, uh, it's all part of a big package. Uh, you noticed on Friday we sent you uh, saying more would become. Uh, there is some material at the last minute that we could share, but instead, Madam Chairman, we're going to ask that we pull this from today's meeting and take it up at the September meeting and then we'll be at the Board of Aldermen's public hearing. So with that, the first action item would be number four. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have two rezoning tonight. Uh, the first one is uh, kind of a combo. We have a, a petition and uh, the two. there's two ways to do a zoning amendment. One is through a petition of the planning commission to initiate. And we're going to be asking you to do both, do both tonight on the, on the project. Uh, the other rezoning uh, is, uh, is a review of, of a petition. Uh, the uh, black area, well, this is the North Sarah Phase 3 area is the black area, black boundaries. And as you'll see from the other photo, uh, Phase 1 and 2 is east, uh, school building to the west, and playground. Um, but the rezoning area is a portion of one of those blocks. And Half acre. There's four parcels. Three, the three in green, are in my Kingsway Baptist Church, and the one parcel is uh, owned by private owners, Paul and Lois Thompson. Uh, so the petition is for uh, parcels uh, that the church owns. They have options on. Uh, aren't there a phase three of the joint of performance uh, You may remember from the earlier phases, the housing authority is the owner of the land and the uh, So 
third. There is initiation is being asked of 4202 Finney, which is the orange parcel. Uh, the Housing Authority is trying to acquire that negotiation, uh, but has not completed uh, that and uh, do not have an option on that property. Uh, now, consolidation of the rezoning area, we're, we're proposing that it goes from F, and some of them are both C and F, uh, to C residential, which allows this development. And uh, if we did not initiate this parcel, then we, we would have two zones uh, instead of just one C zone. So consolidating it uh, forms one parcel, 15 other parcels and four parcels in the zoning area. And if we don't uh, rezone that, we'll have a dual zone situation. Area, the area, the, the earlier phases, this is the city block that we're looking at this evening. And you can see that the eastern half is, is well, kind of, you can see a vacant lot there that's owned by the church, but that's not part of the rezoning. And then the church property and the rezoning is here. And then there's other residences that there's op options on that are part of it can be demolished. This is the rezoning area. Uh, there's a parcel that the main church building, uh, the church and the school building are on. There's another parcel here that has a two-car garage. And uh, then if you go on the other side of the, the church, there's the church owns a vacant property, but it's one lot away from it. So the other private property by the town is here. This is a close-up showing you that there, there is a two-story garage building still there. Uh, the house was condemned and uh, it was demolished about seven or eight years This is the zoning map and you can see that there is commercial zoning on Finney, including the front portion of these four parcels. And then some of the parcels are acquired parcels and go all the way through, including the church. And so they ended up with uh, zoning from the bank side of the block. And we end up with two parcels with F zoning and two of them both C and F zoning. This is the phase three site plan. I think this is where the existing development is. And this is how the new one fills out the block of zoning. Uh, vacant lot here, and then there's the zoning area right here. And, uh, and then this is the southern portion of phase three. In the vicinity west of the rezoning, these are all, all properties that have options on them to become part of the site. Three, here. Next to that is a very large site. You can see the school across the street. Uh, this is the church building. You can see the vacant lot there owned by the church. And then uh, you can see the new housing both on Finney and back on Banks. Uh, and this is just a view of that uh, earlier phases. Half the block is already developed. The block to the south uh, has four residences that there's options on. And you can see the conditions uh, of some of these properties. Uh, they're very blighted. Uh, then outside of the phase three area, this is directly across the street from the rezoning area. Uh, it's a very small warehouse parking lot and the rest of the block is all vacant. That's to the north of the rezoning area. This is the Stevens Center for Academic Development, which is one of the anchors of 
phase three. On the other end, uh, this is one of those buildings that's very to the sky right through the Greater Purpose Christian Fellowship is staying there. New development, but it's between valid This is the land use plan. This is the zoning recreation open space preservation, but it is adjacent to a large amount of neighborhood development areas, which calls for a large scale redevelopment. Uh, like the type that's uh, in North Sarah. So I'm asking you to use the adjacency rule. You can see past, past phases, they're now neighborhood preservation areas because they have been redeveloped. And uh, so after this would be developed, it would also become uh, the yellow preservation area for the whole project. Uh, there is a rezoning, uh, uh, well, the rezoning area is in a Chapter 99 area. It's uh, well, passed 10 years ago. It's a very large area. Uh, it's about three times the size of this Phase 3 area. And uh, and that's, all of these phases are under the Chapter 99 redevelopment. Uh, the zoning administrator has uh, recommended for the, the four parcels that we show on the maps, the, the rezoning area to be classified from C, and some of them are C and F neighborhood commercial, to only C and multifamily district. Uh, and then the staff is recommending, as part of the petition, to we're recommending the use of that for three parcels. And it is in conformity with the neighborhood development area. And then we're also asking a separate uh, recommendation to initiate the development uh, for the, uh, the one part. And that also is in conformity with the planning And the end result of all of these actions is the rezoning of those four parcels so that they match the fee zoning of the rest of the project. We have uh, several guests, uh, Emily Barron, Randy Rose, and Emily Barron Bernstein, and from the St. Louis Housing Authority, Jeffrey Lowe. And uh, they'd be glad to answer questions for staff or people. Any questions? Yeah, I have a curious question. If, if I remember correctly, probably about three years ago when North Sarah was going through phase one, there was the talk when there was a split between one side was Alderman Davis, the other side was Alderman Terry King. There was this talk about maintaining some green space, which was consistent with what I guess the land use map suggested. Did that change over time? Is there somebody that can answer that? Uh, I'll, we'll do that in two parts. I'll answer part one and we'll let the developer part two. Is uh, a while ago with Terry Kennedy, we looked at this area and was designating this odd strip as being uh, a uh, green space. The subsequent development plans have not caused for that area to be green space. Uh, and the developer is working on now renovating, what's the park? Turner, Turner Park. Park. Turner Park that serves the area. So the, the, the oddity of that one strip was there's no alley, it faces on two streets, so it, was, so it at one time was dreamed to be uh, green space. But that's, that's all changing to being part of the comprehensive development, which has its own green spaces and the park. And the photo of the Turner Park, this is the ball field. On the other corner is the playground. The other question is, I noticed McCormick and Barron has a, you know, they're the petitioner. I didn't see anything in there with the Thompsons who own property. And the Thompsons are the owners of one of the parcels. Mm -hmm. 
that the, the, this is a partnership between the permit bearer and the housing authority. Uh, that in this whole, I'll, I'll let people tell me if I get this wrong, that in this whole strip of individual parcels is the one that they do not yet own. Uh, the uh, okay. some parcels you own hmm? just a couch. just right. Uh, some parcels they own outright. There are four parcels that they currently have under option that are in the zoning area, and the and the owners have uh, participated in the petition for that. And then there's one parcel that they're still in negotiations with that is not part of the petition because it's still in negotiations and we're asking you as the planning commission to initiate the rezoning of that one parcel. The, did I get that right? Yeah. Okay. So the uses that are being proposed by McConaughey Baron are all a use by right in this overall geography. They all are uses that comply with C. In this slice of bread that you've seen there, of all the individual parcels, they will be consolidated, resubdivided into one parcel. When the city does that, it likes for all the parcels to be of the same zoning type, um, of which in this area now, there are two parcels that are zoned both C and F. That's not something that we like in general. Uh, the more restrictive applies, therefore the C applies. So as I end this, it means that these combination of land that's currently zoned J and owned by the Housing Authority, the combination of land that they have under option that is zoned F, C, C and F would all be rezoned to C and the parcel that is F and C and owned but not owned by a private owner that's not yet completed the negotiations, we would use our powers to rezone that to strictly C. Okay. Thank you. Which doesn't have any impact on the landowner's use, current use of the property. Right. They would be held to a C use. Right. I guess I, that's, that's why I need clarification because so if I'm conscious and I'm saying I've got an F zone, and that's got more value than a C zone. But they, they, they have and yeah. right, right. right. So, so, really so we're, we're not all going to talk at once. But continue your thought. And, and I think we were nodding that we understood you. Right. So does the commission have the right to impose that change on a property owner without their permission? So I'll, I'll do two things. Is one, you're, you're, you're because of this funky street, there probably was two parcels there at one time, and it's now, now is one parcel, and it has this two zone. If you come into the door of the city and say, I own this property, what can I do for them, do there? They'll be told that what they can do is what's allowed under C, the more restrictive of the two. That's what, that's what they would be told. The second part about our, our, our permission, our, our embodied in the planning commission powers is, to do rezoning for the city and initiate it without, without uh, they're doing the initiation by petition, we're the ones that can do the initiation. And then obviously it's all at the Board of Aldermen for a public hearing. I notice there's no uh, support letter from the Alderman. He, the Alderman is in support of the project and I received an email today that he was sending the letter by tomorrow. So it has been confirmed that the letter is in route. So we don't... Likely story. <laughs> <laughs> Likely story. Right. Yeah. So, 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 so the, the, the multiple skills and tools that are here is the petitioner, these guys, we have to act within 45 days of their petition. Uh, we don't need an automatic letter to act. Uh, they're a little foolish if they don't have the automatic support because the end game doesn't happen. Uh, and... Uh, Obviously, we asked them what's the status of it, and that's what they were doing. And what's the rush? They don't even, you don't even own the property. What, what's the rush? So, um, finance, are you with McCormick? Yes, yeah, financing. So, we received 9% tax credit from MHDC in December, so we have a um, closing deadline of December of this year. So, we're working towards that closing deadline. So. 
the only way to get to the closing deadline is for us to go through this process and multiple steps. It will get us done by early November that will allow us to close by the end of the year on finance so we can start construction. So I would think they're well motivated to ultimately cut a deal with this property owner for that. Um, and that could be at the 11th hour, but the rezoning is a longer process. And in terms of things, it cleans it up. It will do what we like to do, which is a single zoning classification for one person. Maybe exposes the city to the, uh, some action by the former, by the current owner. We had discussions about that, and uh, one, we're, we're we still can do it. Yeah. And two, the, the, the risk gets to be minimal. That's easy for me to say because of the restriction that, that we customarily imposed that it's a C zoned use because of the mixed zoning on a very small site. What's the width of the site? Yeah, that's fine. It's a 25 foot site. And we can't make this contingent on the closing of the That would be a, a awkward thing to do and would be really sort of negating our powers a little bit. We're, one of the reasons why I said the 25-foot parcel is in our view of wanting to do land use planning, we probably really don't want a 25-foot wide parcel in this neighborhood able to be, be uh, oh, yeah. uh, I, really, I totally understand the yeah. logic of yeah. that. Yeah, Trying to make your job more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you two get better jobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they get paid for. Yeah. Other questions, comments? You entertain a motion on both the three parcels and the single parcel for recommending the zoning change. So moved. Second. They moved and seconded. Uh, Alderwoman Cruson. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Commissioner Stouter. Aye. Commissioner Powers. Aye. Commissioner Peoples. Aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Spade. Aye. Commissioner Visentainer. Aye. Motion passes with all present voting. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Take it to the shower room. Okay. Now we have the position a little bit simpler. This is a uh, 0.84 acre site. Can I try something with the lights? Sure. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. By the way, I was gambling. I didn't know which one of the four would do that, so I was pleased. This area is west of Tower Grove Avenue. And uh, this is the western portion of the Tampa Heights neighborhood. And it consists of two parcels. The so one parcel, most of the site, and it's all the buildings. So this has two mixed use buildings and it has the parking lot that I'm calling the front parking lot, which is a nice little tower growth. The second parcel, 1607 R, rear is the parking lot in the back. And this is the parking lot that now serves the whole project. Uh, rezoning this from C and F to uh, C and J to F would allow all the current and future mixed use, including the commercial space and residential use. And uh, this, this is happening because MSD is requesting that they consolidate the site. Uh, just to orient you, uh, this is the front <coughs> building, commercial building. Uh, this is the Union Studio gift shop, the slam advertising agency. And then uh, this kind of peak roof is the old standard fried chicken. The uh, Urban Improvements Construction at URC has facilities back here, and, uh, and there's residences in, in this 
which I'm calling this whole thing the, the rear building. Uh, and then the parking lot is back here among the trees. That's the second lot. Uh, these are the commercial facades, the long tower grove, and there's a driveway between the chicken restaurant. That's right here. Go to this parking area, and then this building on the right and the back is the main residential area. And around the alley, uh, behind the, the fence, is the large parking lot. Now you can kind of see the situation as the zoning was industrial for the home block coming down and including the commercial buildings and, and, uh, and uh, the parking lot uh, was zoned residential like the uh, area. Uh, in the vicinity to the north is Casco Corporation home, much of the northern portion of the block. Across the street at City Garden Montessori School, which you guys see was involved in developing. And uh, there's residential, single family residences along the south. Most of them are uh, older homes. There is a, a new uh, modern design home on the block. And then a van eventer is industrial use is directly behind his UPS uh, facility. Uh, the strategic land use plan, this is an opportunity area, of course, opportunity areas the city is making the proposal. Mr. Seuss proposal. This is the opportunity area, and, uh, which encourages a wide range of development activities, including the mixed uses of the development. Uh, MSC requires lot consolidation, this kind of set off. Uh, Zoning Administrator explained, uh, recommended this changing uh, zoning to F. Consolidation, I mean, would create a dual zone parcel. And like we discussed earlier, the C is the stricter zone, so the guidelines would prevail. Uh, but in the C district, uh, the Office of Commercial Use is prohibited. So we'd be making most of the uses on the site non conforming use. Uh, this rezoning permits the petitioner to bring all the zoning in conformance with the current use of any other future uh, uh, Staff recommends approval. Um, on what basis is MSP requiring a lot consolidation for what reason? a lot more consolidation. Um, there used to be kind of a policy, like if you bought the vacant LRA lot next door to you and you wanted to put a rain garden on it, the city would not make you consolidate those two lots to do that if you wanted to keep them. Well now, apparently I spoke with someone at MSC and they said that they're now requiring people when they do that on a vacant lot, do a rain garden, they're going to require them to consolidate the lot. They're also going to start to require people to consolidate lots if they have very complicated, like, irrigation systems, stuff like that. Um, so we probably, I know we're already seeing a lot more people in the office coming to see us. They want to do consolidations and figure out now they have to rezone. So we're probably going to see more of those here at the Planning Commission. And that was the explanation that I got from MSD. So I assume that MSD is doing, is making them deal with surface runoff. They're dealing with the surface runoff in a rain garden, and if the rain garden's in a separate parcel that's subject to sale, then oops. <laughs> I, is MSC subsidizing it in some way, or what gives them the, MSC's just allowing them to build a new garage or something, and therefore take that runoff and put it to the side yard that they also own until they no longer own it. So does that deed restrict that, I guess it, does that mean that that side yard can never be built on? Is it deed restricted? I mean, it still be zoned residential. I think re life in the city now requires you were calling your 
fulfilling all our pro all our rules and MSD's rules. So if they did something different on that site uh, that changed how they're managing the stormwater, there's probably more options as to what they could do other than what they've done, but they'd have to satisfy MSD. Any of you guys that work in that world want to have a comment? Yeah, MSD will require basically almost like a, a letter that has that as an easement, so all their biofiltration, all that is going to be recorded in MSD in that parcel, so to Don's point, they don't want to sever those parcels, they want to make sure it's consolidated and that, the, that if they ever sell the land, that that infrastructure is part of that as well. Can they build on top of it? Sure, then they'll have to do a new intervention and negotiate that with MSD again. Okay, question for that. So MSD makes me do that. It's my property, I own it. Ten years from now, what stops me from dividing it back to the way it used to be? It's the city that makes the ultimate authority on whether or not it can be subdivided. Well, we don't have to. then if you go back in and try to develop on that subdivided property, MSD will see that that's happened and you'll get caught. At some point you'll get caught if you try to redevelop on top of that. So is the city subservient to MSD then? I mean, it's like they take away our sovereignty some kind of way. That just doesn't logically make sense to me. I mean, they say you can't do this, and then we have to jump through hoops to satisfy MSD. Is that the new standard? You just can't get a building permit to do anything without their sign-off. Developers have to jump through MSD hoops. Yes. That's just a new world, huh? Developers never had any sign <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I mean, there's all kinds of overlays, whether it's utility corridors, you know, we have issues with right-of-ways as well. So you get all these overlay government, and you know, in, in, in the city here, you have to answer to a lot of different groups. So one of the arguments in your work, Jeffrey, is the, the uh, MSD project behind the church Mm -hmm. which is supposed to be a giant retention pond. Mm -hmm. um, in theory, because you know, you and I are still fighting with MSD, would mean that that private property that is now served by that detention facility is private properties that are upstream from that uh, don't have to satisfy MSD's on-site requirements for surface water because MSD is solving it in that big facility. Mm -hmm. Here, these folks have to solve it as part of their development. And the solutions can change over time. Just a, a thought, and I, I question whether uh, the property owner at some point might be able to say, because this has restricted my ability to think in the future, this property is not worth as much, and therefore get a deal and get a lower assessment, and end up paying the city lower property tax in the long So it may cost the city. Or maybe uh, these scenarios get to be is, is that maybe what they've done to cause the need to have the runoff has increased the value of the property and their assessments gone up. Okay, a more chicken's pretty expensive there, by the way. But yeah, a more practical question. Huh? So, why F versus G? Um, it's on Tower Grove, which is predominantly commercial, right? G is commercial. F is more restrictive than G, right? Yeah, here's a map, and there's, there's F along Tower Grove, and then there's G, I guess, a block away up on Fulton, and then on the corner of uh, Lafayette and Stanford. Lighter colors, this is the C, and uh, this is G. But why not G versus F, though? Just explain that to me. I'm just an educational opportunity for me. Um, if you have one parcel with one zone, it, it's usually considered spot zoning. The fact that this is F neighborhood and okay. the areas across the street and down the street you now have a district of F. There was F here and G here, then maybe you know you can kind of decide which one you want. It made sense. 
Okay, but as I'm looking at the map, I see J. J is along South Vanderbilt, right? And then you have J that swings along Tower Grove to Blaine pretty much, right? Yeah. And then you, it's going to make that change right there to F. And that's the last parcel before you get to McCree. The other parcels are actually on McCree. Yeah. There's two Fs on the corner, and then you have, I guess, that C multifamily dwelling. Yeah. I think this is a mixed-use building, and I believe this is a vacant lot, so or maybe the side yard corner building. Who makes the decision of F versus G? And why? Uh, well, I guess I understand why you said you want to kind of have them similar and the same, but it's next to J. Is there any F G here at the moment? No. No. So the, the current map has the F. The applicant, uh, in this case, is needing to do something under a zoning code that it would be allowed in. F allows the use that they want to do. G would be an upzoning of beyond that and would be isolated that there'd only be one parcel of G in this area. Okay. They don't need G. But if, if they wanted G, would G be acceptable? Would it be something that's acceptable? I, so if, I had, if, I, if, I want, if it's my property, I want to have the probably the less restrictive zoning as possible. Right. Makes it more marketable. I can do almost right. whatever I want to do right. with it. Do they have that option? If they can apply for it, then we downgrade it, or how does that work? Ding, ding, ding. Okay. All right. That answers that. Thank you. Other questions or comments? I think we're going to see a lot of changing in this band of ender corridor over the next 10 years. But that, that's why the whole area is an opportunity area. Yeah. It's in transition, yeah. depending on whether it goes residential, commercial, or yeah. Yeah. We could be able to something going from residential to residential. Yeah. And, and, yeah. I have a motion for finding this in conformity with the strategic land use plan and recommending the approval of the change in zoning plan. Second. Second. The previous role has been requested. Are there any objections by any commissioners here for the use of the previous role? Good evening, everybody. Uh, I don't sit here that often, but uh, as you know, uh, we're uh, down to two active planning staff. So, from first stretch, pretty thin and a staff member quite capable and to do the prep work under Dick's guidance uh, did the handout that was in the resolution, but tonight I'll, I'll do the presentation, uh, which we'll find out whether it's good or bad. But this is for a Chapter 99 in far south St. Louis along Interstate 55. Um, it's a big site. It's over eight acres. It does have multiple parcels, but it's really one development. It's been a one to three story institutional building, a residential building. Uh, became vacant in 2012 um, and uh, it's been rated in fair condition. Uh, Charlotte's Home Developers, that's the LLC, we have a representative from them tonight. Uh, we'll renovate the existing building and build a new three story addition. Uh, they're using MHCC low income tax credits. Uh, so there's a condition and rider as to what they're doing with the property. It will have 75 senior living units in this uh, residential neighborhood. Uh, give you an aerial view, this gives you really just how, how large the size this is. Uh, underneath the, the, the shading of, of the parcels, you can see the older homes uh, that was there. Much of it has grounds that are available for walking. You can see a walking trail around it. And then back for the frontage on Broadway at 55, it's tucked into this residential neighborhood uh, and been viewed as an asset for some time, but went vacant. Uh, 
I will tell you, it's charming. It's a hidden gem. Uh, you can see some of this uh, as you go quickly by or stop at the light as to what's in there. Um, so it came through the process uh, to MHDC for low-income tax credits with a renovation, an addition, uh, and keeping some of the amenities on the site, the walking trails and such. Uh, and so it could be uh, an amenity uh, for seniors living there. Uh, renovation and new construction work in progress. Uh, historic new, new parts to it. Uh, it is, yes, that frontage where you saw the iron gate. Uh, on the outside of the iron gate, there is the hectic part of the city and the, and the interstate and uh, some neighborhood uh, commercial type stuff and regional commercial type stuff. Uh, but you get back into it and it is surrounded by a residential area. So as you see on this is the, the strategic land use plan, uh, everything but that interstate areas are in our neighborhood preservation area but this site used for residential, but in our strategic land use plan, we have two things that sort of trigger being an institutional designated parcel. Part of this is, is uh, adheres to various laws, uh, is that we, we have areas where institutions are anchors, and we've designated expansion areas for those anchors and their institutional clout to be an anchor and expand but also in the institutional uh, areas, uh, areas that have been owned and operated by, uh, by institutions. This is one of those cases. But the use itself was a residential use. <coughs> so we wrote up that into the strategic land use plan. The surrounding area is the neighborhood preservation. We'll use that recommend using that as the adjacency to approve the redevelopment plan, which is done through a developer, uh, but we're using the low income tax credits. Uh, we're not using eminent domain. It is then going to be done in compliance with the low income tax credits to have the special population group and amenities on site to, 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 to have them. Uh, Kevin from Roanoke Construction is here. If we were having any questions about the about the problem, could we just hear from the developer a little bit about the nature of the Sure. sure. So I am not the developer. The developer is in Kansas City and couldn't be here, so I am the general contractor on the project, but have uh, been working on this project for a little over two years, so I have some knowledge uh, about the property. So it's it used to be an assisted living facility. It's the uh, first building, that stone building you saw in the pictures, was built in, I'm told, late 1840s, early 1850s. They've had six or seven additions to it over the years, the latest one being in the 1990s. Uh, so it's just been wing after wing after wing added on to the building, and it's been vacant. It was a Charlotte's home. It was an assisted living center. There's a nursing uh, wing. There's a commercial kitchen and a dining facility on the property. There's a chapel on the property. And it's been vacant since early 2012. For the last two years, we've been working on this development, trying to secure financing. Uh, we have secured low-income housing tax credits. We're also utilizing historic tax credits. And the plan has changed slightly. It's 75 units. It's now going to be 71 units, uh, one and two bedroom apartments for Seniors age 55 and older uh, will be income restricted in accordance with MHCC's low income housing tax credit guidelines. Uh, we have uh, commitment for financing and we are planning on closing at the end of this year, probably in September or October. And how long will that take to complete? Construction will take uh, about 15 months total. a lot of renovation in the old portion or just the new building? There is a lot of renovation in the old because the old building right now there are 
either single rooms or single rooms that share a bathroom in the middle. So we're basically leaving the halls intact in accordance with the historic guidelines, and then we're basically gutting everything between the hall, the corridor wall, and the exterior wall of the building, taking out all of those walls, putting in all new plumbing, adding bathrooms and kitchens in every unit, adding all new HVAC, HVAC systems, all new windows, except for on that front stone face, there we're actually refurbishing the existing windows uh, in accordance with the National Park Service guidelines. They've asked us to do that, so we've given them one sample of that right now, and they like that, so we're going to continue with that. So it's going to be a, a pretty substantial renovation. Uh, total cost will be around $10 million. If this were not for profit, they would pay taxes anyway. Correct. And there is a nonprofit partner in this project called Five Star Senior Services uh, that's located not far from here. They'll be relocating some, actually looking at maybe relocating all of their services into this building because we have plenty of space in the building. The old nursing wing is not planned for uh, any residences. So Five Star Senior is going to come and utilize some or all of that space to provide services to the seniors that live in this building as well as those that live in the surrounding community. Tell me how many units will be in the Twenty-four in the building. And you're also receiving uh, either block rent or home funding as well? Uh, we have received two allocations from CDA, uh, 100000 from the last round, the NOFA last year, and 300000 from this year's NOFA. And I think it was block, yeah, one was block rent, one was home. I believe it was block rent last year and home this year. Um, I think this building was on the tour that was given to Alderman this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I think it was. Yes, right? the CDA tour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we is didn't it get out, but we drove up. Right. Is it all low income, or is it a mix of low income and market? It's all uh, low income. It's all low income. And you say you've been working on it for two years. What does that mean? So we applied for financing with MHCC a year and a half ago, two years so ago. So working on getting the yes, subsidy. Working on getting the subsidy, working on uh, yeah, two applications to CDA, refining the scope, changing the scope. We were concerned after the first year that they didn't get, it was vacant, and they didn't get the low income tax credits. Uh, what, might end up being the fate of this historic yeah. building in eight acres. It's a very pretty building. Mm -hmm. The only thing I see on the blighting report is that it's really the only condition that seems to be blighted is that it's unoccupied, therefore somebody might illegally dump, live there, or rats might get there. We do have some animals uh, occupying the space right now. There's some <laughs> bigger than rats, too. There's some raccoons. I've seen evidence of some raccoons and squirrels and some mice. Is the building in bad shape? It's not terrible. It's pretty good considering it's been vacant for a few years. We haven't had any copper thieves. Uh, thankfully, they, the current owners, the nonprofit that currently owns the building, have had 24 hour uh, on site manager, security, whatever you want to call it. They've had someone on site 24 hours a day for the last three years just to make sure we didn't get a lot of intrusion other than those animals. Is it, is it paying taxes now? Or what's it's, the base It's a non -profit So it's right never now. paid any taxes. Right. Yeah. So <coughs> is it 15 years of full abatement? I believe so. I, I don't know. No, it's probably 10 and uh, I was just looking up there. Usually, that, usually they're that 10 That's what our match to, to go with the loan. <coughs> so what happens after those all go away? They'll be back there. It'll need to be renovated. <laughs> yeah, typically these, these properties get, get renovated every 16 years or so. And they There's a 15-year tax credit reporting period. Why yeah. are you gutting the, the, those rooms? Uh, to make them marketable as apartments because they're 200 Absolutely. square foot rooms. It'd be hard to market a 200 square foot apartment. Is there a site contamination or brownfield on this? No, I mean, we have it says not, it is here on this. We have not found any kind of 
soil study, um, actually, no, that's not correct. There was one, that is not correct. There was a uh, storage tank. And have you already remediated that? Not yet, but it will be done during the project. There is a lot of asbestos that will be remediated during the project as well. Okay. No further questions. Other questions? Um, well, this is a terrific project, okay. Yeah. I, I had hoped that we were pushing away from 15-year tax abatement. That's my hope. <laughs> So this is the this is the, this is one of those exceptions we do to match the loan. That's the collective we there as a city. To approve. Second. Move to second move that we uh, move the blighting study and redevelopment plan and agree to the blighting of the area. Recommend it to the board of aldermen. Um, could you read the roll, please? I've pressed previous roll if that's acceptable. Previous roll has been requested. Are there any objections by any commissioners here to the use of the previous roll? Okay. Um, Mr. Young, the matter passes. Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank Connie Thomas-Sula, who's the person that did the prep rush. Oh, okay. And Dick, you're going to move through the North River yeah, this is an area we visited last month. Uh, if you remember in uh, Interstate 70 at North Broadway, and the uh, Love's Travel, and we approved a hotel right here. This is the Metro Transit. Uh, this is this is North Broadway. Uh, this is East Taylor. The connection over to West Forest. Bircher. Wonderful. Right. Uh, yeah. It's a, almost a 15-acre site uh, between Taylor and uh, nearly 400,000 square feet. Uh, it's a uh, former Wonder Bread Bakery. Well, the same Twinkies we made there. Uh, it's uh, deteriorated, uh, obsolete building for industrial. Uh, Mark Cusimano, who is the developer, is here. Uh, acquired the site for 2.6 million and uh, uh, The site is located uh, near the entrance ramps, and I believe uh, this is the one that perhaps is going to be improved uh, in the near future. This is aerial of the site. This is the warehouse. This is not Broadway. Perry. This is the Love Travel. Photos of the site. Uh, it's already been uh, repainted and uh, it's on the outside. Uh, this is the North Broadway facade. Uh, and cemetery <coughs> many loading docks along East Taylor cemetery is to the north uh, Western Star Freightliner truck uh, we saw last week it's right across the street to the east the Metro Transit is to the south this is the shoe manufacturing one that was adjacent to that hotel site. We love down. Um, uh, on the west end of the site, uh, near Interstate 70, and Taylor, Raven uh, Tower, which was the previous Chapter 99, is right across the street from the warehouse. Uh, Allen Park's across Interstate 70, and uh, there's a uh, Bacon area, I guess, gravel parking lot uh, towards the west there. Uh, this is the road leading to the East Taylor Bridge, and then there's also a, a West Taylor Bridge and entrance. You can see the facility in the background. So it has a lot of uh, interstate knowledge. Uh, Strategic land use plan, uh, it's a business industrial preservation area. 
see that in the past we have changed uh, some areas of development that have occurred. So there's been a lot of progress along this stretch of new uh, this uh, Chapter 99 plan is in conformity with the Strategic Land Use Plan. Uh, it provides for five years of tax base. Uh, and uh, staff recommends approval of this Chapter 99 lighting study. And as Mark Cusimano is here, you may remember uh, he was the developer of the Federal Records Center down on the base. Massive warehouse. We did a plan unit development chapter nine. S U D. Markets here. Question. I'm wondering how far eight hundred thousand dollars goes on a four hundred thousand square foot building in terms of renovation. The majority of it is the uh, removal of all of the stuff still bakery. Uh, they took they auctioned off all the equipment to save about all Procedure. The developer who has site control sought and applied to SLDC LCRA to, to have it uh, be put in a redevelopment plan to affect tax abatement. Uh, we've seen that redevelopment plan passed on to us from LCRA with the blighting study. Uh, we'll approve it, disapprove it, that's the action we go on here about accordance with the strategic land use plan. 
go to the Board of Aldermen to become a redevelopment plan, and then ultimately they still need to be designated a developer by the LCRA. So does the uh, bank stay by state to, they don't, they're not developers, some other developers? It would be available as an incentive to somebody else. Yeah. But they have site control as, if, if you have site control, it's a little bit different matter than those uh, redevelopment plans that in some ways I tend to be fond of when we look at a geography, blight it, come up with a plan and use the tax incentive as an incentive to get a variety of people to come on a broader end. Other questions or comments? Okay, thank you. Motion to approve the Biden study redevelopment plan in the area provided and recommend it to the Board of Alden. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Request for previous row. Previous row has been requested. Okay, guys. Um, we have an objection to use the previous row. Alderwoman Prusen. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Chair Stouter. Aye. Commissioner Powers. Aye. Commissioner Peoples. Aye. Commissioner Jay. No. Commissioner Spade. No. And Commissioner Visentainer. Aye. And the motion passes with six ayes and two nays. And Roman's going to take us through the Forest Park Crossing Neighborhood, Chapter 9. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This is the Chapter 99 Bloody Stuck in the Redevelopment Shoto Avenue, Center Street, Papin Street Redevelopment Area. The site is about four and a half acres in size. It consists of a single parcel, 4001 Shoto Avenue and it's uh, located at the northeast corner of Sarah and uh, Shoto Avenue in the Forest Park Southeast neighborhood. You may remember that uh, back in April, the Planning Commission approved an amendment of the uh, strategic land use plan that included this particular site. The uh, existing use is a vacant lot, and uh, Commerce Bank Building was recently demolished on the site um, and uh, was replaced by a smaller uh, Commerce Bank facility. Um, what's being proposed is Shoto's Road, which is a $60 million development project that consists of two phases, and it's a mixed-use project. Phase one calls for 271 apartments, about 20,000 square feet of commercial space, a large parking garage, and a public plaza. The uh, second phase of the project would include some additional commercial and, and, and or residential space. Uh, the prospective developer is Green Street Development Group, LLC, uh, which uh, developed the uh, Urban Chestnut Growing Company's uh, beer hall and growery at the other end of uh, the Grove um, on Manchester Avenue a few years or so ago. And Brian Pratt, one of his associates at uh, Green Street, uh, is here tonight and uh, they're available for questions. This is a uh, aerial photo of the redevelopment area. It's about a year or so old, so it's still in shows the uh, Commerce Bank building, um, which has since been demolished. Uh, the site is uh, located at the primary eastern entrance into the Forest Park Southeast neighborhood, as well as the Grove uh, along Manchester yes. Avenue yes. and Shoto Avenue. Uh, there's a number of uh, development projects that are going on in the area, including the large IKEA uh, north along Vanaventer, North Exhibition District, the new EJC office building, which was recently yeah. completed, and of course there's a new Metrolink station plan as well. So this is a, a hot uh, development area in the city. Um, the photo on the left shows the, uh, the large Commerce Bank building, which has uh, since been demolished on the site. The photo on the right shows what the site looks like now, about essentially a vacant lot. And to give you a better perspective, this is a photo of that redevelopment area looking like like a bunker. So basically it's parking lots and, and uh, green grass. Uh, in terms of adjacent properties, this is a smaller Commerce Bank building that was recently constructed with faces on Vandeventer Avenue. Uh, to the south is a 
mid-rise office building in its parking lot. Uh, to the west is the entry sign for the Grove Entertainment District, along with a variety of uh, other land uses. And to the north is a, uh, an office slash warehouse building and uh, a foreign language school. Uh, Green Street submitted a, a couple of drawings to us. This is a preliminary site plan uh, that shows showed us Grove. The apartments are located on the eastern side of, of the uh, project area. The commercial space is shown here in the light blue color along Shoto Avenue. The parking garage is hidden away on the western side of the site, and a plaza is proposed. Now, this is a rendering uh, submitted by Green Street. You can see the building is four stories in size. With ground floor commercial space. This is a, a public plaza that's proposed. It would be constructed on a piece of right-of-way uh, that would be vacated. I understand that that's still in the process of being uh, and that would be under separate approval. The uh, city strategic land use plan designates the entire site as a specially mixed-use area shown in blue, which encourages the mix of land uses and obviously that uh, this particular development project fits in perfectly with that. And uh, again, the um, specially mixed use area was put in place a few months or so ago. Amendment number 13, strategic land use one. And that was done in uh, succession to a, a neighborhood visioning process. And there also, in the, at the time, we're working with a developer to have a development such as this happen. That's right. So the uh, development plan is in, in conformity with the city strategic land use plan. The redevelopment plan is proposing 10 years of tax abatement. Uh, there's no need for eminent domain. The developer has the property under contract, and uh, staff is recommending approval of the planning study and redevelopment plan. And we have two representatives of, of Green Street here tonight. For any questions about this. Call. For anybody who would answer this, $61 million is phase for phase one and phase two. Hi, Brian Pratt with Green Street. $61 million is the uh, first phase, which comprises the majority of the site. Uh, there's a strip along Sarah that we're leaving in the future phase to determine if first floor retail is viable or not as we extend up Sarah. So uh, as a compromise of the neighborhood, um, we're leaving that as a kind of a future phase to determine uh, the viability of that. Otherwise, we'll look at the work units, but we still will continue with the four-story development to complete the wrap around the parking structure. Other important Yes. Brian, is this the second iteration of this project? It seemed like this was the site where there was a lot of hoopla about a grocery store and some apartments and commercial mixed-use stuff of within the past 12 months, but... Correct. So our initial plan was to uh, incorporate a grocery uh, into the overall site plan. We made um, attempps to land a grocery. The mm -hmm. fact of the matter is the neighborhood's residential density uh, doesn't meet the expectations for grocers for this area. Mm -hmm. So um, I think both the neighborhood and Green Street agree that the thing we can do best is continue to bring rooftops to this section of the city and ultimately we'll be able to attract a grocer, but it's, uh, it's a little premature to do that at this point. Um, in some respects, though, we've, we've, we've provided a much more urban uh, plan because we removed surface parking. All the parking will be provided in a uh, structured parking situation and all the buildings will be pulled up to the street lines. Did I see correctly 565 spaces? Correct. So the garage is behind? That's correct, yes. Look that again. Okay. To the space of the kid. Yeah, it, it, it looks like a, a surface parking lot right there. It's, a, it's basically four stories of parking. So how many units is Which uh, approximately 100 parking spaces will be uh, provided for the public. Okay. So the balance of the spaces will be provided for the residents of the apartment. And how many units are you projecting again? There are 271 units. So about a car and a half kind of sort of parking space. A little, a little bit over a car and a half. Okay. Uh, based on our discussions with other hotel, our, uh, apartment projects, uh, 
not having a car and a half or more. It's, uh, it's been problematic for a few recent developments. So. My wife would be somewhere to park. We can always flex that. <laughs> we, can always, we can always reduce the amount that it gets to private. It's always difficult to add more. So. Uh, now, uh, so the public parking would that be paid parking or free parking? No, it'll be, it will be it will be paid. Um, we're going to be working in conjunction with um, the neighborhood, which is looking at um, some various options for parking as well, um, and. You know, obviously there's street parking available. We'll be adding street parking as well to the Sarah Street side. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have I don't the, the current count, but there's roughly 14, 14 or 15 public on-street parking spaces, and we'll be going in about 27 to 30. So we'll be almost doubling the, the public parking on street parking, as well as providing the additional pay-as-you-go parking uh, in the neighborhood. And potentially, what's the maximum amount of commercial units or stores could you? Yeah, we've got 20,000 square feet based on our experience. That could be anywhere from three to five or six spaces. We've, we've had some good initial feedback um, from various um, retailers and restaurant tests. We don't have anything to announce or Okay, thank you. What is the time frame for all this? Uh, we're hoping to close on our financing um, first quarter 2016, which would have us open by early summer of 17. Other questions? The uh, street vacation, that's Shoto, Lega Shoto, is that where you're? Yeah, there's a little stub of Shoto. It kind of V's off right at Manchester. Oh, that's actually where Manchester becomes Manchester. <laughs> um, and so, as, as many if you've traveled the Van de Venter intersection recently, there's there's some improvements that are being made um, at Van de Venter in Manchester that MoDOT is requiring, and they have recommended as a part of the overall circulation improvements of the neighborhood to have that vacated. The community recognized uh, that as a potential urban space, so we will be doing a hardscape plaza um, that it will be available to the public. Um, and you know, the design of that yet to be determined, but uh, we're also looking at you know doing a bike ride share station out there, uh, things that'll activate, but it will it will help us extend the grow business district up to our retail without having to cross two to three streets to get to it. So, so what kind of financial commitment do you have for that? Uh, that is the cost of the developer. Cost of the developer. Uh, we have budgeted approximately four hundred thousand uh, dollars. Would that be maintained? I'm sorry. Would that be maintained then by the developer? Correct. It'll be. It'll be. I mean, it'll still be privately owned, but uh, we'll be. We'll be making those improvements direct ourselves. So, so this plaza is part of the MSC aesthetics of how you. Deal with the rainwater. Oh man, I, I could go off on that subject. Uh, I, I can go with you too. Drive me nuts. Uh, we'll have a conversation about that on the side. So in this portion of the city, there's a thing that they have a deep sewer or a deep deep pipe, I believe they call it. It's the deep pipe, um, which um, provides some level of bypass to their system. So if you're fortunate enough, you still have to do some quality on-site quality issues, which, which we're taking care of through various sustainable means. Um, the plant itself will not be um, incorporating a whole lot of that. It's really intended to be public scape. We'll be doing that on kind of our internal courtyards, et cetera. And we'll be able to tap into the deep pipe from here. In fact, we have to provide a new pipe from Van up, um, sorry, with the Northern Street, Pappen, um, that will tie into the existing area storm sewer to not only improve capacity for our project, but enhance the neighborhoods as part of the cost. Uh, we're also wearing Amherst power lines from Manchester to Pappen uh, in order to accommodate the streetscape and parallel art and parking. Obviously improves the visibility of our upper floors, but that's at a cost of $750,000. So, um, and we're also making a contribution to the neighborhood to help them with parking throughout uh, the road, which is a part of So that only will be providing more than code requirements for parking space. Uh, yeah, 
is that the Park Central? Um, Correct. Cake. Okay. What? There was one down there. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, is this a lead project? Uh, we're evaluating whether or not it will be. It definitely has some sustainable features in. Uh, it's concerns about the HVAC design, and that's really probably what will drive whether or not we go, you know, a lead standard. But we will certainly be incorporating other sustainable features. Whether or not we have the nameplate uh, designation is kind of to be determined. So you. Sorry. Sorry. I, I, I'm not sure who I'm addressing this particular comment to, but our charge is really exclusively about whether or not the site is lighted. Uh, and the form that gets filled out here says that it's got, it would take significant investment to bring up the code, as well as an empty lot. So I'm not sure what that really refers to. Uh, so whoever does prepare these forms, I guess I'm suggesting that they give us more of the and that, by the way, it's the same uh, statement that was on the prior uh, uh, the lighting, lighting report. And so I've, I've just made the point that we should have. No. If that's what we're going But I'll speak with them tomorrow because I'm tired of this. And you're tired of us. Uh, is this LRA? Hammered on you every day. No, it's LTRA. LTRA does it. <laughs> I mean, if, if, that's, if that's what we're supposed to vote on, I guess I'd like a, a, a little more. But, uh, how about a yeah. professional lighting study? Uh, well, okay. they do that at times. Yes. Okay. But, I, I, but but on, on that regard, it's so so hold it. Uh, I, I will say. Like a motion no, no, I, 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 I shouldn't request anything. They they have new staff. I'll, I'll give them that. We'll have a little session with them about that. We should be verifying the lighting, so we'll, we'll help with that too. And then when we get to new business, I'll give you a little treat of something that I think you like. I think, unlike the last one, I can understand how complicated the site is and, and what you're trying to. I mean, the amount of the level of environment that's going yeah. on here. I mean, yeah, snow water, the electrical lines. I could see this being a real wonderful anchor, you know, in this community. This is going to be a great project. We really shouldn't take our frustration out on it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> if the code is. So it's not formal code, if it's the neighborhood's desire and their planning process, this is precisely what they spent two years envisioning in the yeah. And so it's, it's not to defend LTRA in their uh, preparation of lighting studies, but it's possible that they may have started off when the, when the Commerce Bank building was still still water yeah. Could before, be. before, it was, before it's demolition. That's not really a wild excuse that I like. Uh, <laughs> so those of you that work for me, will be easy about that. I as far as to just move to approve just so that I'm not on that last vote that I did. Yeah, okay. So right. I move to approve and I don't know what you would do then. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. Right, I second. Second. I second it. I second it. I didn't say you up there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Are there any comments that anybody else has? <laughs> um, hearing no comments, would you read the roll, please? <laughs> yeah, I'll hold woman person. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Chair Stouter. Aye. Commissioner Powers. Aye. Commissioner Peebles. Aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Spade. Aye. Commissioner Visentainer. Aye. And the motion passes with all present voting. So, Madam Chairman, I'd like to do one thing because you opened the tent flap and that Green Street has done projects of significant size. So they've used a lot of land around the, around the city uh, and have dealt with MSD issues that way. Not to open the tent flap expansively, but if you just give us a couple tastes of something that's either been crazily uh, creative that you've done, or boy, we can't believe we had to do that, but we did it. Just. I mean, I will say to the question of, uh, you know, you, you do have a separate permitting process through MSD than, than the city. Um, and uh, from the development community standpoint, uh, MSD's um, inflexibility is uh, an added cost burden to development in the city. It is an impediment. Um, at times, it's over-engineered. For example, we have uh, a new project behind the Loves Travel Center, which we just completed, uh, which has a, a detention basin in front of it the size of an Olympic swimming pool. We just had the wettest uh, rain in June, and at the most, there's been a half a foot of rain, a, a foot of rain 
wow. held in this detention basin, which is at least 50 to 20 feet deep. So um, it is a constant struggle to get them um, to relent. With, in all fairness to them, they're under some edicts from the EPA, and they are trying to compose um, new rules and policies and procedures, and those change oftentimes during your design submission. So what you think is okay after you leave the meeting is not necessarily what is okay when you submit your final, but it, it is a it, it is a challenging uh, entity to, cur to deal with currently, and I'll just leave it at that. Fair enough. Madam Chairman, I do have three items of new business I'd like to do. Uh, okay, Please. first, does anybody have any uh, comments or questions about the delegated items? There's two of them that are over a million. No questions? So, Fine, go ahead. so three quick items. Uh, one I'll do first is that we're going to have, uh, fortunately, some part-time staff joining us. Um, one will be back to be able to help with general planning things and may end up showing things at the Planning Commission. Leave that one in advance. Uh, the second is through the Department of Conservation, uh, and actually it will be administered by the Botanical Gardens, but we will have on staff a landscape architect that will continue on the project that's been called uh, uh, Urban vitality, vitality and ecology, or ecology and vitality. Uh, but what really we're going to be doing is working on vacant land. And the issue that, that we want to do you know, with that, and our SC2, our federal partners are helping with us, is in terms of vacant land, uh, there are some areas of town that have been bought out and have been used for MSD purposes they will never be developed. MSD has a tendency that because of their needs for those sites to do something about detention, that engineers come up with solutions for those sites. Uh, my family is all engineers, uh, but they're not necessarily the greatest community benefit to them, and sometimes they're over-engineered. Roman was with me on a tour yesterday where we happened to stop at two rain gardens uh, and I asked what this little facility was, and it was the required irrigation system for the rain garden. <laughs> I practically had a cow. Uh, and uh, so the, the aspect that I'm talking about here is, yes, in some of those areas, uh, you compact it and you make it be an engineered solution. But if you brought it out, because we have larger amounts of vacant land, uh, you might be able to do something that becomes more of a community amenity. And that's where the Department of Conservation comes in, is that they're supporting us looking at those areas to be more green type uses, still have the same benefit for uh, controlling stormwater runoff, uh, but be of a different nature that would be a community benefit. So we thank the Department of Conservation to help help us with that and to have that person on board. Well, it gets to be bigger aspects of the vacant land issue that this will, person will also work on, but the main premise is, is that, as we've talked about. So, so look forward to that. We, we're, we're enthusiastic about the uh, young woman that we've hired to do that. And I'm thankful to, the, thankful to the Department of Conservation for the money, and I'm thankful to the Botanical Gardens, which is doing all the administration of it. Uh, and that's really a wonderful thing. Uh, second thing I'll quickly show is that we've been doing as a work in progress looking at zoning notifications. Uh, it's a little tough with our limited staff to really you know, put our full attention on it. Uh, we have recently sort of done a, a check of the, of the high-tech versions of things that have been done uh, with our colleagues such as in Portland and Seattle. Uh, we just got that. But this is just a collection from other cities uh, of what they do. The last one is not Dick Zeriger's family crest. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we'll leave these as a bit of a of, 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 of work in progress to show you that, yes, they're larger, uh, which we need to do some negotiations with how we could do such things. But really, the Z on the end 
is a good reminder of that if you're, what you're trying to do is get somebody to pay attention and delve deep, deeper, maybe there are some simple ways to do that. So we, 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 we found this collection. We'll dissect it. We'll work with some of the folks that are involved, responsible for posting. We have a backlog of things. And we'll also share it with the neighborhood. We haven't had time to share it with the neighborhood that brought this to our attention. And, and over the course of the summer, come up with some recommendations to that. And Zia is from Springfield. Oh, is it? Okay. Hey, Don, what about other sorts of public postings other than zoning? There are others. We're, we're, uh, I will say, I, I, these are ours. Yeah, so, so, so I will say, uh, the obviously redevelopment plans are something that gets posted. Yeah. And um, uh, not my department. I don't usually know that, but I will say that Otis stuck his head in while we had posted those and said, hey, I really like those signs. So, hey, maybe we've got a 10 flat for that. Yeah, yeah. or yeah, to do that. So, so. But if you say to everyone call 657-3700, have you ever tried to call that number? Which one? 657-3700. Here? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Call it from outside sometimes. Get in. And you've got to know who you want to talk to. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, I... It's... Yeah. <laughs> right, right. it's yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. So, oh, is that on the redevelopment plan as the contact? Down here, 657-3700. Well, oh, that's in Springfield. Difference. Oh, what's our number here? Uh, 657-3700. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 You yeah. have a bunch of frustrated, mad people. They have the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the graphics department may have pimped us, but uh, <laughs> they but may I, have. But that, that's because that was taken. That was not taken from their file, but a picture. The last thing I want to bring up, uh, and we'll get back to that, is that. Uh, one of our guests tonight is a newcomer to the mayor's office who uh, we constantly, by the way, uh, botch his name. So I'll probably do no ex I'll probably do that again tonight. But Noel Pfeffer pretty is pretty good. Yeah, he's very generous. He tells that to everybody. Uh, is a recent graduate in economics from Washington University uh, and is now a full-time employee in the mayor's office and has a number of very active assignments to look at. One of which uh, is looking at the sustainability impact statement uh, that we see that comes to us from uh, LCRA. Uh, so I've asked Noel if he'd just say a brief little uh, uh, snippet of, of that he started on that and, and what our general intent is, if you would. I'll keep it short because we've already been here a while, but basically, uh, the current uh, sustainability impact statement is somewhat toothless. There's little enforcement power. A lot of developers just go right down the right hand side, just yeah. say, no, don't give it a second thought. I uh, had a really productive meeting with Dale Rousseff, Zach Wilson, and Mike Griffin, um, and they're currently hard at work on a new draft. The critical change uh, to which is that there's actually within this new draft an incentive uh, for uh, developers to. Uh, when you check on the left side, certain ones uh, are associated with a one or two percent tax abatement increase. Mm. Uh, the idea is so. The idea there is that it incentivizes them to go after the low hanging fruit. So, for example, if adding five trees represents one percent tax abatement that results in one thousand dollars, right? Now there's an incentive to do that. Putting a solar panel, they might be It's not going to solve everything, everything, but it's a start. So uh, we'll be looking at that new draft uh, next week. Did I say you had a degree in economics? Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, along, you know, the, the city requires new construction of it to meet a certain lead standard. Uh, at one time, we considered that to be uh, something that we do in the the uh, redevelopment plans. It suffered at the time that we were considering that because lead is a private organization; they weren't turning things around very quickly, uh, and uh, we didn't do it at that time. But we're back into that idea of there is community benefit we get from from these developments, but let's look at uh, it as being also defined in the sustainability impact statement. Glad to have them work. Thanks. Anybody else have any business coming before the commission? And are we really having, is there really a meeting in August? Uh, probably not. So those of you that haven't been here, it, you know, much of our work is driven by the automatic session. 
uh, and uh, some of it is, didn't, is driven by a 45-day clock, some of which is mute if the, all the men are out. We generally seek waivers for that so that we don't have to have a, 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 a August meeting, and we just sometimes pay the price by having a pretty heavy-duty September meeting. So you'll notify everyone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your business. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.